Okay, yes, my straight talk family, it's long past that time for me to say a very pleasant night to St. Kitts and Nevis, a very pleasant night to the entire Caribbean region, and in fact, I should say a very pleasant night to the world. I can say good night, good morning, and or good afternoon to the world, because especially in the diaspora, you are all over Asia. Some of you are in Europe, and there are some in Africa, and there are a whole lot of you all over North America. So I'm at liberty to say good night. I can say good morning, and I will also say good afternoon, because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region in which you now find yourselves. I'm somewhat of a little, little tardy start, and I must apologize for that. I wasn't even aware. I, I, I caught myself off guard, occupied doing some things. I am I, I try, I, I'm a perfectionist, so I always try to get things right. And I do get in trouble for that attitude at times, but I guess you could understand why. For my Show Talk family, if you are joining me for the first time, and we do have first timers, I want to thank all those who share the link. And please, don't stop sharing the link, because we want to spread the world, or the word, far and wide, near and far. Because Trade Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues on Street Talk. We do have a forum to express ourselves freely. Let us in the process, let us in the process strive to, to get St. Kitts back to that enviable position i know it is a himalayan task i can uh, uh can, can, can confess uh but let us try nothing be it a failure but a trial but my sure talk family on this program we try also to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights to their responsibilities, and certainly uh, to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybert, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity to join you in conversation on, yes, another occasion. And I, as your host, I will continue to remind you, I will continue to pledge, I should say, that I intend to remain an untiring advocate of truthfulness. As I'm always reminded of the words of a favorite hymn of mine written by Thomas Jackson and Franz Joseph uh, Hayden, I think it's name, and goes something like this. I like this excerpt. We are called to be God's prophets. Speaking for the truth and right. Standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. So let us seek to the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we all may know the blessing of the doing of God's will. And my sweet talk family, I, I can assure you that nothing, absolutely nothing, is watered down on this program. We don't try to make it more interesting, neither by omission or by exaggeration. We don't indulge in sensationalism or creating excitement, especially at the expense of accuracy like many others do. We just lean on the facts. So I consider it my duty, my bounding duty, to always present the unvarnished truth, the plain truth, especially when it comes to Governance in St. Kitts and Nevis. And this is just for the first timers because we do have first timers each time. And for your first timers, if you like it, spread the world. Tell the world about it. If you don't, please come and tell me. 
So this program joins us together with people across the Federation. And through this program, we are joined with people in the diaspora all around the world. Some we have met, some we know, and some we may never meet and will never ever know. Uh, and as I say so, I mean physically. But, but some will agree as well with the positions of truth that are advanced on straight talk, and some obviously will disagree. And that's fine, because we promote diversity. We are a different people. So we'll entertain different views. But it would sadden me, I must tell you. It would sadden me if we start to become disagreeable. So let us thank Almighty God, nonetheless, for helping us to understand. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let us hope and pray for the day when we will all sing all sing his praise together so welcome once again and thanks for sharing the link and please continue to do so and for the first time as i must also inform you that straight talk is a participative program by that i mean we include your calls we include your emails and if you're so minded calling the numbers are 663 that's a local number and or 646 is an overseas number, 646-829-6672. I know. I know there are quite a lot of you who like what I call the cloak of anonymity. You don't want to be heard. And for obvious reasons, especially with the kind of leadership, I mean political leadership in this country, we don't even believe some people have a right to work. So we give you access via our email platform, which is straighttalkpatches at gmail.com. That's S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T-T-A-L-K-P-A-T-C-H-E-S at gmail.com. As a matter of fact, it's on your screens, so you need not worry, need no pen, no paper. Look at your screens. All the information is there. I say a special welcome to my junior brigade, young Dwayne. Tristan, I trust you are doing well. You would have reminded your mom. I see Shama quite often and Travis. Travis and Trevon of Ponds Extension. I, don't see, I haven't seen Trevon, but I see Travis quite often on his way to school. How is Nevis, Kevin Hanley? And young Ru, Kevin Hanley up the Charlestown Secondary High School. I think that's what it's called. And Rue Costa. I trust you are on the honors roll and striving to, to get better and better. Make your grandmom and your mom and your entire family, including me, happy. It's Red Street Dog family. You are part of the Young Brigade. And Jamal in Anguilla. How is Anguilla tonight? And our special lady over there in St. Louis. Yes. And tonight I start on a sad note in terms of obituaries. And as Trey Talk learned with sadness of the passing of Irvin Van Camper a few days ago. And I wish to extend sincere condolences on your behalf and my own behalf as well. To those left to mourn his loss, his wife Aditha and her their two children, his brothers Don Boncamp, Don Michael and Fitzgerald, his sisters Cynthia and Donna. And I always remember Irvin. We call him Judge. I always remember the confidence he always ex- Zooted when we met. I, I met him in England, of all places, would you believe, when he was uh, doing his studies there, or we were both doing studies. But we all called him Judge and met many afternoons by Tony Berry's shop. Tony Berry, my, my friend, I almost said my white friend. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Judge would always order a quart of vodka. Uh, I don't know if he's like it was like Fanny Willis who likes the Grey Goose. I don't think it was Grey Goose, but he always ordered vodka. And whenever I asked Judge how 
was he doing? I was going, I was, I was, I would get a response. His response was always great, man, great. You know, he, with, a, with, a, with a measure of confidence. So, I must say that Judge fought a good fight, I know, and he has gone to the great beyond, and I pray that his soul may rest in peace. And just to let the family know that death is a process, and there may be others who are out there who have lost loved ones that I'm unaware of, but I want to let you know as well that death is a process. And for our first timers, we do, as a format, uh, entertain our observations in review. Then we move on to a short dissertation or thesis. And the title of my thesis tonight, or short dissertation tonight, is Why a Team Filled with Experts Performs So Poorly. Our observation in review is an integral part of the program. And then I said we move into to uh, our, our thesis. And our first observation, my straight dog family, I, 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 I want to raise the United Nations World Day 2024. And this year it will be celebrated on the 22nd of March. It's normally celebrated on the 22nd of March each year, I believe. And this year's theme uh, under is on, and this is under the theme, I should say, leveraging water for peace. And this theme is aligned closely to the work carried out under the Water Convention. And this year's theme underscores the crucial role of transboundary water cooperation in fostering peace and sustainable development. And transboundary waters account for 60% of the world's fresh water flows. Yet, here it is, only 24 countries out of the 153 countries sharing transboundary waters have all the transboundary basin area covered by cooperative uh, agreements. And there are key events uh, scheduled for World War today, and even here in St. Kitts, I, I forgot to load uh, the program. I listened to the, what is called, the water, the water, there's a, there's a program uh, hosted by the water department uh, each or uh, every other Wednesday or someday in the week, I, I can't recall, but uh, they they do have. I I, I listen I, I I listened to them and they were speaking. The program really surrounded that around Water Week, which is next week, uh, to celebrate World Water Day. But water is a driving force for peace and stability. I can say, like I said, I listened to. The Waterline is what it's called. The Waterline is a program held on, uh, uh, hosted by the Water Services Department on on, uh, on ZIZ Radio. But no mention, though, was made of the continuing development of the water resource by BEAD, which started under the Team Unity Administration, to tell the truth, you know. And the silence, I, I, I will continue to make the point that the silence of the Water Services Department and by extension the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, which is responsible for water, and the Minister himself, the Soka Engineer, and the Permanent Secretary, I must include as well. I find this silence shameful, you know, especially when you examine the widely published aims, values, and principles of the Water Services Department. And the aim of that department is to provide an affordable and reliable service to every business institution and household whilst ensuring the sustainability of our water resources. And I, I didn't get to put this up on your screen, and I apologize for that. 
but the values and guiding principles of the Water Services Department, do you believe, include honesty, integrity, quality service, respect, patriotism, teamwork, fairness, knowledge sharing, and <laughs> accountability, my straight dog family. But for several weeks, Straight Talk has been raising a concern about the quality of the water apparently found by being in Kian. And yes, water was found. But what we are saying, we do not know about the quality of the water found. We cannot say whether it is good. Neither can we say it is bad. And we are saying there's only one way to verify that, and that way is called quality testing. And what is wrong with that, my street dog family? But in the meanwhile, they are they're, they're hustling, as my young boy used to say back then, a lot of full speed to connect this water to the public system. And what they're doing, including the representative of number eight, they are all placing politics ahead of people's health and safety and then they come to tell us water is life they come to tell us that water is life and some want me to hush to keep quiet but these are the ones who cannot stand public scrutiny and i won't keep my mouth shut not in the country of my birth I will not be like a horse whose mouth must be held with bit and bridle lest they will come near me. So my sweet dog family, it's not about discrediting or crediting anybody. It's about quality. And that's all we want to know. That's all we want to hear. And we can't understand why you should be sit back and trust July. Why should we sit back and trust the Soka engineer Congress? Why should we sit back and trust the manager and water engineer Cromwell Williams? And I would include now who is the accounting officer of, of the ministry and the accounting officer for water. I've been overlooking that. Who is Daryl Lloyd, the, prime, the, 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 the permanent secretary, I should say. And worse yet, I say, why should we trust Bead? And I won't stop until we have answers, my straight dog family. And interestingly, as I said, the Bureau of Standards tested 27 of the wells, all the wells that are under the, 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 the custody of the Water Services Department. All wells are, all water, public water is. And why isn't the Bureau of Standards included or, or, or being contacted? But what else can you expect? My straight dog family. But the issues being raised by residents in Keon. I know you call me. and it, Well, I must say you shouldn't call me, but feel free to call me. You call me each time, some of you, to remind me to keep this or keep flagging this issue and no matter what they say no matter what they call me I, you, you need not worry about anything I am good my straight dog family I am, I'm, I, am, I am washed by the blood as some people would say but the issues raised by the residents in Kian and surrounding areas concern health sickness and death and we have to flag it each time Another thing surrounding water I, 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 I raise is the, 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 the flagrant abuse or, or the flagrant uh, floating of the, the, the procurement legislation. You know? And it's funny. It's funny. I went to the website of the Water Services Department and I was taken aback when I saw a request for proposal 
So I got interested. What was this request for? And believe it or not, I was taken aback as well, even further, when there was no access to this request for proposals. And you can see that, my sweet dog family. No access <laughs> to this re request for proposals. As you can see, the lo your login just fails, my street dog family. Your login fails. This is what happened to me. But that does not preclude the, the requirement uh, to satisfy the procurement and administration legislation for those in charge of water or any procurement whether service or goods or works the procurement legislation speaks to the publication not on your website that's not available <laughs> cannot be cannot be accessed but it speaks to publication in two local newspapers for six weeks and that is not satisfied so even your your, your publication of an RFP request for proposal, as you can see on your screen, which I couldn't get access to. And that's from February 2024. I think it's February 26, 2024. So those who are in authority of this department or all departments must make certain that people can have access to the information, my street dog family. But government methods to procure goods and or services are prescribed, like I will always say, by legislation. But when you listen to the so-called engineer Congress, you know, and he reveals that a contract was awarded, I understand that contract has not been signed yet. And the, 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 the Lucifer, Lucifer has gone to Zanzibar, I, I heard. But it paints a picture, as I will continue to say, that these elected and unelected and some unelected, unelectable officials are making decisions behind closed doors. And that for me and should be for everyone creates a perception. It creates a perception, my street dog family, of corruption. And it would seem to signify that government is working on behalf of certain private interests. Again, as I said, I looked at the Water Services Department webpage and they posted this RF, RFP, Request for Proposals, but no one can access the page. So I don't know if it was a belated uh, attempt to, to get in 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 uh, to keep in line with the requirements of the law, but in time we will tell. But from now, they are all quiet. There's also an issue uh, brewing at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College, and that's why I, I didn't have the time, I not have the time, but I overlooked uh, downloading that letter, uh, which, which, which relates to the faculty and staff that ha to date has not received or have not received their 8% raise in salary but uh, workers have been told that the matter is being discussed with the Ministry of Finance. But Shred Talk will continue to follow this development and the treatment of workers by a political party that came out of the bowels of the trade union movement. So it is really sad when you see these things happen. But those are my observations in review for tonight, my Street Dog family. And I move right into my thesis, which I told you is titled, Why a Team Filled with Experts Perform or Performs So Poorly, my Street Dog family. And a friend of mine saw the publication of my theme for tonight's program and sent me this message which I found so appropriate and I asked him permission to read it as my introduction so I could avoid any plagiarism, my good friend. 
Uh, normally in, in research, we cite the authors, but I'm, I'm sure he'd want to remain anonymous. But it reads like this, and I quote, Good morning, my brother. When a team of experts come together, it comes together, it's for a good reason. Unfortunately, this time it is to hustle the country's coffers. That's the message I got for, for my friend. And what makes someone good and marketable at what they do is the presence of consequences. By that I mean, if for example, I am a poor mechanic or bodybuilder, or, 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 or not bodybuilder, but uh, yes, they call it, they call it body, 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 body repair, or whatever the term is. I will lose business or I would fail to generate business. If I'm a poor contractor, my house may collapse on me. Like when I hear them talking about the, this Eastern Caribbean, uh, EC Caribbean housing development and going upstairs, I wonder if anyone would want to do that. But if, 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 if I'm a poor contractor, my house and that house may collapse on you. They're talking about going upstairs. But with politicians and bureaucrats, there is no responsibility and no consequences, and I'm speaking specifically of these ministers of government whom I refer to as politicians. They accept no responsibility and there are no consequences when they harm others. When they cut social assistance programs for the poor and increase their own salaries with bogus justifications and lies, my straight talk family, is something we have to scoff at. <laughs> the law in regard to salaries for parliamentarians and speaker and other um, persons in the National Assembly is the salary commission legislation which says that a committee should meet every three years to recommend to the parliament what the salary should be. That commission is supposed to take into consideration inflation, um, look at factors such as comparatives in other jurisdictions with similar economies and all of those things. There was a report done in um, 2019 in relation to that um, legislation. And that is the legislation that the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister spoke about. So there was a, actually a report submitted and there was a, the, the, previous, the previous National Assembly approved the increase um, that was recommended by the commission. Um, so, this, but the salaries, but because of incidents, they didn't get to actually trigger it. But the salaries for ministers have not increased, I think, in about 15 to 18 years, since I think 2006. A minister actually makes less than a permanent secretary after the most recent increase of civil service um, the civil service scale last January, which increased 10%. So the PSA salary is more than the minister's salary. It makes no sense. Um, I have read the two salary commission reports, the one that was prepared, I think, in 2005, which led to the increase then, and the one that was prepared in 2019, and they mirror each other. In order to discourage ministers um, being corrupt, they should be paid well. Also, Ministers should not be paid less than middle managers in the country. Right now, ministers are paid. You, you know, my straight dog family, that commentary or, or comment from Attorney General Garth Lucifer Wilkin is so fraught with inaccuracy and lies. Because, and but that was in August 2023. And like the corrupt politician is, or has proven to be, he lied in order to exclude themselves from any consequences uh, with, uh, from coming out of, or deriving from these salary increases. 
And we knew back then in August 2023, that was uh, nigh, what, seven months ago, that from day one, as Marsha Henderson transmitted that position very early, that they wanted to increase their salaries. She said this, remember, my straight dog family. I, but I'm hoping that the ministers can, in fact, get an increase um, in salary. It's, I, it's, something I wouldn't, I, I, it's something that I would not be opposed to. Um, so, but that's above my pay grade. And my straight dog family, so seven months, seven long months after they all drummed up their courage or the courage to pass a resolution which they sneaked into the parliament without sharing a copy in advance as required by the parliament by parliamentary procedure. Uh, and it is well documented as well that a liar has no memory. So Garth Lucian Wilkin, Garth Lucifer Wilkin is his name, confronted with this Salary Review Commission Act, was therefore forced, my straight dog family, he was therefore forced to speak the truth about the salary increase. And he said this after. In 2018, the, formal, the first formal Salary Review Commission was established. And the report was prepared and submitted to the then Prime Minister. It was, however, not tabled in the National Assembly, nor, as we discovered in this Honorable House, was it tabled in the then Cabinet. When we took office, the then Governor General, God bless his soul, late Sir Tapley Seaton, KC, brought the report to the attention of the Prime Minister, the member for number eight, who then brought it to the attention of Cabinet, and now it is tabled in the National Assembly as required by the Act. This is the procedural history of the 2019 report, Madam Speaker. What a change. A few months. And he has now brought the truth. But going beyond that, my straight dog family, the entire country is still livid. The entire country is still angry. And the view is still being touted that they have not delivered to the people or on behalf of the people yet have instead delivered to themselves. Selfish bunch of politicians. My thing is, yes. I believe you do it later. The first election and you win and you go back in. I feel that you should that may be a point. that you were able to deliver for people before you deliver for yourself. But this is my point of view. And well accepted point of view by most people. Because these ministers protect themselves to the extent that they constantly lie as they become less efficient and less accountable. They are self-proclaimed experts, my straight dog family. Self-proclaimed experts are all of them. All of them, my straight dog family, have become self-proclaimed experts as announced by July. I'm tremendously proud of this team. This team is filled with experts in various, various fields. Any field you might call, there's an expert here, somebody who is well-versed in that area, even more versed than me, and that's a good thing. So if I talk about sustainable development, you have Dr. Joya Clark. If I speak to youth and women affairs, you have Honorable Eislin. If I speak about small business and entertainment and agriculture, Samuel Duggins is, Honorable Samuel Duggins, well established. If I speak about energy and engineering and so forth, the Honorable Connors Maynard. If I speak about the law, it's a given for our AGS. When I speak about the tourism product and the advancement of labor laws and so forth, we have our learned Honorable who is a lawyer. When I speak about experience in government, we have our senior minister. When I speak about education and I mean, when you talk about empowering of the youth and community development, we have our Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Jeffrey Hanley. And so this team is a serious team. 
But my Shred Dog family, with all the expertise, all the seriousness surrounding this team, for nigh 20 months, they have not performed. And many have concluded that all of them, the bunch of them, are in politics for money. They are just a greedy bunch of politicians, according to this Labour comrade. I believe that remuneration should really be based on performance. And, you know, it's going on two years, and we haven't seen anything major being done. And, I mean, to go and give yourself such a hefty salary increase based on whatever committee, you know, that has been put together. I just think it's wrong at this time. It probably should have been done after the first term. I mean, from 17,000 to 22,000. But I mean, to do this at this time, and everybody is they're suffering, I mean, you give minimum wage, you know, increase it from 360 to 430, 70 dollars, a drop in the bucket. You go in the supermarket, the plums in there, that's sometimes for 495, but to 1895 a pound. I mean, come on. All the certain people are supposed to eat them. I can afford to buy them. Anything in the supermarket. A lot of people can't. And these are people with children, small families. It's upsetting. And it's greed, you know. Nothing but greed, my straight dog family. With all the expertise, the boast. Many still ask, why are these ministers, these politicians, why are they so incompetent, my straight dog family? That's the question that many people, almost everybody is asking. Why are these politicians, these experts, why are they so incompetent? incompetent that's a common word you'll hear all around the country whenever you travel or wherever you travel it is because they are representative of those who elect them frequently based on little more than appearance and personality or family traits you know, my grandmother or my entire family was labor so i'm not gonna move i'm gonna be labor till i die or i'm gonna be pam till i die or nrp or ccm till i die no we have passed that stage i believe as an intelligent people and nation then to make matters worse they are not held accountable for their actions which most are ignorant of they don't know and at best only focus on what they say which is increasingly at an utter disconnect from what they do for special interests in particular who fund their campaigns know what policies they want and make certain that their wishes are represented yes they buy elections and Terence Michael Drew himself made that confession that elections in St. Kitts Davis are easily bought. I didn't say so. This is what July said. The election in St. Kitts and Nevis, whether you believe it or not, can be bought. It is not too expensive for a rich person to buy an election in St. Kitts and Nevis. This election has proven that. And you see my straight dog family? At one stage, when I heard my former classmate, Ira McMahon, would say, we must change the change until we get the change we need. I asked myself, what the hell is Ira talking about? But I, I've come to understand and have come to support Iro, who advocates just that, that we must change the change until we get the change we want, my straight dog family. And I could understand his position now. I think it is more practical to keep changing our vote until we get the change we want. We shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. The fact saying that you change until you get the change you want. And I understand it. And as he said, you should not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. But my straight family, constant change 
is the very thing voters need to do here in St. Kitts Nevis in order to restore our functioning or a functioning democracy. And people will have to stop selling their vote to the highest bidder. And that is how it is in St. Kitts Nevis' elections today. Many at home sell their vote to the highest bidder. And in the diaspora, they batter their vote for a free trip home to stay at a fancy hotel. Some of them have not been home for 15 and 20 years, 10 years. So when elections come, they get a free trip to St. Kitts, spend two days, a house or accommodated at the Marriott Hotel or somewhere else, and they fly back up and leave us here with a government that we did not vote for. And don't get mad and all up in arms with me and try to say that our democracy does not work like that. Hear me out. And think a little about it. Doesn't the current model of democracy in St. Kitts Nevis work just like that? Ask the question. Answer me. If you don't believe, listen to this, my street dog family, if you don't believe that. I can still be fair of contradiction and how to apply to dwell, being able to land the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party would now be continuing the tremendous work which has made St. Kitts Nevis the bright spot of the region. In fact, it is well known that on that final flag that arrived after the polling stations were closed, there was no less than 99 um, passengers who were registered to vote for constituency number one, Labour, and no less than 66 passengers registered to vote for constituency number four, Labour. In these two constituencies, number one, four votes separated us from the so-called um, victory. And 26 votes separated us from the victory in number four. However, we who stand here before you, we are strong. We are not easily distracted or discouraged. Yes, my Shrizok family. So when we reflect upon what transpired back then, you heard the former Prime Minister said 99 votes were there for number one and the 56 for number four. So when we reflect upon what transpired during that last election in August 2022, I will go on record tonight and say Labour did not win those elections. It was Team Unity that lost them. Team Unity imploded or collapsed from within because of the snake-like behavior of a deceptive politician called Mark Brantley. He charmed many in a deceptive manner. He charmed the leader of Pamben with his mantra about fear share for Nevis. Where is that today? The same approach Timothy Harris undertook is what Terence Drew followed. And night two years now, the snake Mark Brantley has been eating humble pie and he's saying Terence Drew is a man of his word. That's all he's saying. He has ate humble pie for almost two years when he talk, comes to this fear share. You asked about fair share. Well, that, of course, continues to be an issue. Uh, I mentioned um, Prime Minister Drew uh, on two or three occasions during this press conference because I said thus far, he has been a man of his word. Thus far, in terms of our discussions and the issues, he has responded positively. But my straight talk family, meanwhile, we have a team filled with experts performing Badly, to say the least, or as I put it, poorly. In the area of housing, they have found no solution for the poor and indigent except to encourage them not to be disheartened.
Moving quickly on to housing, um, 21 houses, we have 21 houses, might be a little bit more now, um, that is under construction. But what is very um, happy, why, why I'm very happy is that the 2,400 homes from East Coast Development that we have been uh, talking about, they are actually on ground. They have started their work on the sample homes that uh, houses that would be delivered for us to see as a model and then right after that that is going to be the take off with all of the houses that will be built i know some persons would have applied online i don't want you to be disheartened even if you are told that you're just qualified for a one bedroom we are collecting that data because we Imagine a single mother with four children and he's saying not to be disheartened. You want a three-bedroom or two-bedroom, you're satisfied with a two-bedroom. But they're saying you don't qualify but take a one-bedroom. My street dog family, a model home was allocated today. So small is that home that no matter how much food the slow student begged from a certain supermarket, the bedroom still won't accommodate a full-size bed. Don't mind those pictures. You can lie with pictures. The slow student has taken us back to the era when a house was big in the day but small in the night. So if that single mother cannot afford to pay for a two-bedroom house, she must not be disheartened. My street dog family, recall, it was Lucifer who said, you must be bankable. My street dog family, bankable is his words. This is the solution for persons who are bankable and can take a mortgage loan from a, a credit union or a bank and they can purchase their one-bedroom house for 111000 a two-bedroom for 213 and a three-bedroom for 197 You heard that, my sweet dog family? Do not be disheartened, is what he said, my sweet dog family. But in the area of health, it is even worse. The Joseph N. France General Hospital needs improved service and good equipment. Not like the second-hand dialysis machines we got from Toronto. But the Minister of Health and Prime Minister, as I said before, has given priority to repairing the morgue. Did you hear me, my sweet dog family? This is what he said. The morgue, the morgue was in dilapidated condition. I'm sure if any of you would have gone there because of investigative purposes and you see the morgue, you'll be so disappointed. Somebody told me once they're standing in the mug and the water coming through the roof, dropping down in the mug. We have put an end to that. Yes, he has fixed the mug, my street dog family. And he has given truth to a post by Dr. Melissa Cable Wilson. She had to be correct when she posted Patients are dying in droves at the JNF. I'm sick of preferring patients, she wrote, and they are denied access because of doctors are lazy or have big egos so they can't be spoken to. The patient always pays the price. Is it why, or is, is that the reason why July has fixed the morgue. Morgue are for dead bodies, my street dog family. So, is this doctor correct? Agriculture, my street dog family. Agriculture is limping, limping on, as many have been promised money on trees by Samal. Remember this, my street dog family, money on trees. The marijuana industry, as we have heard, is a multi billion dollar industry and we have been dragging at a snail's pace in getting in 
involved. And I could not understand for the life of me why. Literally growing money on trees. But yet somehow, we don't want that. But I dare say, that era is over. And it's now a new day. And a better way. So in 2023, expect a vibrant, thriving marijuana industry. Literally growing money on trees. <laughs> But my sweet dog family, 2023 has come and gone. So Samal was not serious. So we asked whether Marsha is serious about the staleness of tourism, as she indicated. We also wanted to diversify our offerings. Remember I said we were of the view that the product was sale because we're not only selling for ourselves, we're competing with several destinations. And so we're competing with Antigua, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, all those other destinations that are out there. We have to get our product there and compete with them. We felt we had to diversify what we offer Meaning, we had to offer more than the sun, more than Frigate Bay, the beach, and more than the sand. You could. My sweet talk for me. Samal was laughing. But Marsha is serious about diversification of tourism. And she's diversifying to cannabis tourism is what we can look forward to my straight dog family. She is really serious, according to her. She said this. Then we are diversifying our offerings, meaning if you have a product, a tourism product, we want to keep it fresh and relevant. So when you go to some other destinations and they have sexy things, when you come to Sen Kit, it mustn't just be um, Frigate Man Friars Bay. There must be things for our visitors to do. So we ventured into cannabis tourism, and it's not that we want everybody to be high, but when they, we want to enhance the visitor experience. So when we went to the budget discussions in December, that was one of the things we discussed. If you all are following, you would see there's a request for proposal for a master grower. A master grower. Masha is serious about Cannabis tourism. Will tourists be high in St. Kitts Nevis? Imagine that, my straight dog family. Puffing and sniffing, whatever it is. But it's the education system, though, my straight dog family, that is in disarray. And here's a short report from the slow student, my straight dog family, about rectifying the issues within the education system that is in disarray. And I'm happy to report this evening that some extensive work will be happening at most of our schools during the summer vacation. Just to give you an idea, the Irish Storm Primary School, as you know, because of the, the incident, we were forced to put certain things in place. That site will be ready for September, we are 95% complete in terms of the renovation work. And for the first time in a long time, we'll be able to use the entire, the entire school. The Basia High School, the bids went out and they are now at the procurement board. Um, yes, so that they can make a determination of who would have won. So by September we will be demolishing our school. The Joshua Obidaya Williams Primary School, the tender documents will be released this month with mobilization projected for early 2024. That's the primary school in, in Molyneux. Tucker Clark Primary School, if you visit, you'll recognize that the bathrooms are uh, under repairs. We are actually doing a brand new bathroom at the Tucker Clark um, Primary School. It's amazing 
that innocent kids, we have schools that had no windows and no doors and electrical issues. We are rectifying some of that over at the Kayon High School as we, we speak. My straight dog family, there was a release from the Ministry of Education about the Keon High School and the situation over there in Keon. And I must say that the release is not an accurate one. Uh, the release spoke to some work being done over there in Kian. And it reads something like this from the Ministry of Education, my straight dog family. And it is a dishonesty that gets to me, my straight dog family. These men are so dishonest, uh, to say the least, my straight dog family. And that release you can glean from the Ministry of Education. Uh, I spoke to <laughs> what the slow student referred to since in August last year. But at the Keon High School, they tried to deflect. Those releases were an attempt to deflect from the impending strike by the teachers, uh, members of the teachers' union that are represented over there in, at the Keon High School. And my straight talk family, I, I dropped the ball. I must admit I dropped the ball uh, and did not attempt or complete my attempts to, to post this letter from the St. Kitts Teachers Union on my, my page on the, on the broadcast tonight, which is dated the 13th of March, uh, 2024, from the St. Kitts Teachers Union, Agitate, Educate, and Liberate. It's addressed to Lisa Romaine Pistano, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Cable Building, Basdias and Kits. And the letter reads, Dear Mrs. Pistano, we urgent health crisis at, crisis at Keon High School, a call for immediate action. I write on behalf of our union members at the Keon High School. Our members have brought to our attention a troubling health crisis that is prevailing in the school, putting both students and teachers at significant risk. Reports of severe health issues have surfaced, ranging from constant headaches, breathing difficulties, skin rashes, to more serious conditions such as vision loss and organ damage. The suspected cause of these alarming health concerns is the environmental hazards within the school, specifically mold infestation. 
The situation escalated when a teacher collapsed on the school compound, likely due to resp respiratory problems. The teacher's daughter later began to exhibit similar symptoms, underscoring the school's hazardous environment. Students, faculty, and staff have been forced to miss school for extended periods due to symptoms that include swollen faces, persistent headaches, and respiratory difficulties. This raises serious alarms about the school's air quality and overall safety. Investigations into the school's infrastructure have revealed concerning issues particularly with mold infestation. This need attending to like yesterday. Our members have informed us that there was a commitment by the Ministry of Education to allow for air quality testing and mold testing by the Bureau of Standards. St. Kitts on Monday 11th, March 2024. To date, this has not been done and our members continue to experience the symptoms mentioned earlier. Additionally, despite the recent refurbishments, the students' bathrooms are non-functional, leading to inadequate hygiene standards. This comes after a ceremonial reopening in January, which claimed to have addressed these issues, yet the reality starkly remains starkly different. Our members patience is wearing thin. There is a strong demand for air quality and mold testing to be conducted by tomorrow, Thursday, 14th March, 2024. The health and safety of students and educators cannot be compromised. The need for action is urgent as the school environment, once a place of learning and growth, has become a potential health hazard. The situation is not isolated with similar problems having been reported in other public buildings and workers relocated for their health and safety well-being. Our members' health and safety is also important. The fact that teachers are facing these conditions daily is a stark reminder of the urgency of the situation. It is, clear, it is a clear call, beg your pardon, to the local authorities the Ministry of Health and the Bureau of Standards to take immediate action. Our union demands solutions, not stopgap measures, that of painting the building that failed to address the root of the problem. This is more than a call for repairs of testing or testing. It's a demand for a safe, healthy learning environment. The well-being of our members children and the integrity of our educational institutions are at stake. Immediate and decisive action is required to ensure that our schools are safe havens for education, not sources of health crises. Yours sincerely, Dale Pips, President of the St. Kitts Teachers Union. So my sweet dog family, is this another Bastia High School in waiting? But my straight dog family, of importance to us though, as we look at these experts, I'm reminded of the African proverb, when elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. And that can be interpreted that it is the weak that will get hurt in conflicts between the powerful. And that can be seen every day here in St. Kitts and Nevis. These powerful experts in the cabinet that demonstrate their power and lack of accountability. They are the ones who are like elephants fighting amongst themselves. Their members are like elephants. 
my street dog family, they are soaring together, yes. But they are empowering themselves. And that is why they're not empowering our future. They are soaring together, like I said. But they are empowering themselves. And that is why we have a team filled with experts that performed so poorly. And that's my story tonight, my straight dog family. And I am not going to change it. And I am going to open the lines. And I want you to tell me, why is this team of experts, this team filled with experts, why are they performing so poorly? The lines are open, my straight dog family, and I'll entertain your calls and your emails. And before, before I entertain your calls and your emails, my straight dog family, I must, first of all, implore you to respect others. And to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. I just try to be fair to all concerned, and let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us ensure that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concerned. And in the process of doing and or saying those things, let us, my straight dog family, strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. That said, my straight talk family, it's 9.15 and my lines are open and I'll entertain your calls and your emails and it's time to go straight to our lines and say... Good night, Good night. Mr. Patel. <laughs> Good night, my brother. Good night, Mr. Patel. Good night, the Bible man. How you get this done each time? You just seem to get on... <laughs> How do you get this done? Don't ask me that, Mr. Patel. <laughs> Good to hear you. Good to hear you. Don't ask me that. Okay, well, okay, I'll take it back. I believe... Do not it. ask me. I take it back, my brother. I believe that... Just I am not... I am not going to get... I am not going to get my secret. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, no problem. Give us the spiritual intervention, then. Well, um... What Mr. Patel. Yes, sir. I am... Thanking God for stay alive. We all do, we all do. And God is good to me. Now, I read in a passage of scripture from um, Psalm 75. And if I want to say um, read two, I will do it. Psalm 75 was Unto thee. I said unto the foolish, deal not, deal not foolishly. foolishly. Yes, I remember that. The wicked lift up not of your hands. Number five, lift up not your head. And high. Speak not with, a stiff neck. with your stiff neck. Number six. Call promotion. Comet. Not. Neither. Promotion. Comet. Neither. Neither from the east, nor the west, nor the west, nor the south, nor the south. But, but number seven comes. God is the judge of. He put down and sets up one and he sets up put up another. Yes, my brother. And then he telling you. You hear it say number eight, number eight. For in his hand 
in the hand of the Lord, there is a, a cup of mist, and he continues. Now, Mr. Patrick, yes, I, I, I don't know that. Yeah, I'll give it a few more seconds. Go ahead, man. I don't know. Ah, let me hear. It is God do things in His own time. time. Yes. When God see you do too much, He will He will intervene. And so he yeah, are telling you tonight, and he's telling the foolish, don't do foolish things. Because if you do it, you're going to reap your reward. Okay. That's it. Last word in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mock. Whatever man saw it, so shall he reap. can also reap. You know that. We are living a life. We are in this world. We are living. And whatever you saw, we are reap. Okay, my brother. That is it. Man, it may have man be a God of Malachi. Okay, my brother. And it's the same God of that man will. He will handle it. So good night, Mr. Patrick. Say bye. Good night, my brother. Uh, always uh, welcome your spiritual intervention. You went beyond uh, reading the scripture to a little summon it, but we welcome it nonetheless. My sweet dog family, it's 9.20 if you have just joined me. We are looking at our our uh, our thesis tonight why a team filled with experts performs so poorly? And I, I forgot to mention this, my sweet dog family, that everyone is also live on all Amazon Alexa devices. Yes, Straight Talk is live on Amazon Alexa throughout the entire world. It's been run on a platform uh, Massive Vibes Radio and I'm thankful uh, for for that but Straight Talk like I said is live throughout the world on on uh, on Amazon Alexa but I'll go back to the lines and say caller you are live hello caller Okay, I've missed that caller. Let's take this other call. Caller, you are live. I thank you for holding. Yeah, Patches? My Lord. Yeah, you got me? Yes, you're live. You're live. The whole okay, world right. Good. The whole world got you. Okay. Good evening, the whole world. Mm-hmm. Now, Patches, tonight I want to shout out some great men in Sandy Point before I, go, I move on. Milton Smith, Hardis Gums, BJ Brown, and my cousin, Tony Nyers. I know they are listening. Now, let me start here with these people here, Patches. Patches, you realize every day they got something to send on some kind of media platform to spread the propaganda. <laughs> you observe that? And, yeah. And let me say something here. They concern this Mickey Mouse cannibal long pocket full of pods call yourself government. All the concern is about advertising their name. If they kill a sanity, they send it on the radio station to make news. Well, well, why do you think they're doing so? They're performing so badly, though. Sorry to interrupt you, but why, why do you think? That's okay, man. I love your question, Patches. Ask me there. Mm-hmm. Why? You know the reason why they're doing that? Mm-hmm. Because nobody opposing them. Okay. The whole, you, no. right, the whole country. Sorry, go ahead. No opposition. Okay, I got you. Sorry. Right. The whole country, everybody mumbling in the public. Mumbling and grumbling. But nobody would make the move to show them that we are not satisfied with their behavior. Their behavior is, is, is what you call um, garbage. 
that needs to go in the solid ways. And this is not 19 months now since the India doing foolishness and every day they feel like they got more leverage and pleasure and power of authority to do what they're doing. You remember in the days when man, when, when battleship come here, we used to say man war in the harbor. And there are two famous streets in Bastille. Any hour you could grab there, sun up and sun down, when the sailors them and land. <laughs> we know the behavior that, that used to be on those streets, we used to call them war being. <laughs> but now the behavior of these, this Mickey Mouse government, with the big ways of paying the pocket, and deprive, deprive the people who are most in need of the money, take it away from them, causing a lot of people to be like those people once ago across Irish town. And he got some decent one, private decent one in the night. That shouldn't be. And I'm calling on the whole country again. I'm getting fed, fed, fed up with people just chatting and no actions. But Patrick, you know what are they going to do now? You know what are you going to do? Instead of calling in on the program with a one night stand talk, I'm putting them together so that people could have them and play them when they want. All the wrong things that this Mickey Mouse government is doing to this country. That is my decision. I tell you, talk. I'll come back, Patrick. Thank you, Salam. Thank you very much. We go uh, straight back to the lines. Uh, my street dog family, caller, you live. Hello, caller. Good evening, my lord. And good evening to the listener, Tom and Abroad, Carl from here. Uh, Mr. Lebert, I'm not near the TV tonight. Um, what do you do? You're so not safe for tonight, Uh Why a team filled with experts performs so poorly? Well, Mr. Ryder, that is very, very, very easy. Mm -hmm. And I know you're talking about the present government. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. Well, that is very easy. Well, hear what is happening, Mr. Ryder. Um, first time, um, we have six um, elected ministers. Only one of them have um, ministerial experience, and we know that the senior minister, the Honorable Llewellyn Lewis. What is happening in all the rest is a young team um, got into government, and they are making, as a young team, they are making absolutely very large and big mistakes. And why they are making these big mistakes, they are not taking any time to learn how and to be taught and to be schooled as a minister in government. But they have, they are, eh? I'm sorry. I, I will say, but they have all these advisors. Uh, and the good, I mean, uh, is a... Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Appleton, Edinburgh, good advisor. I'm seeing me the Prime Minister. Is his Prime Minister's advisor? Could it be? Uh, well, we, 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 we have um, the former um, candidate from Newton to is an advisor and also Mr. Glenroy Lancet. He is very, very knowledgeable and very highly educated. Knowledgeable about what? Eh? What is knowledgeable about what? It's about government. Eh, what is he? Well, I, 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 you know, the big mistake they make with Mr. Glenroy Blanchett. Mr. Glenroy Blanchett was supposed to be an advisor to Mr. Jeffrey Hanley, who is the Minister of Education. Seeing that he talked for so much years, right? They, he had no call in the Prime Minister's ministry. He was supposed to be in the Deputy Prime Minister ministry. They should have even made Mr. Glenroy Blanchett the peer of education. You see, you see the big mistakes and you see why they're not learning? Okay, all right. Got you, my brother. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I 
I mean, having this, we having some problem with your quality of call, though. You're hearing me better now, right? Yeah, it sounds like you're in a foxhole. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's why I tell you I am not near the television tonight. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah. You're 30 more seconds, though. Go ahead. Yeah. What, what I'm telling you is that these guys come into government and every time they make crucial mistakes, they are using and crying out that um, it's unity, put these things in place, and they are just following the guidelines of them. But those, if they are doing that, they're also wrong again. Because when unity was in member, these are a number of years now, so these things needed to be upgraded and, you know, right? So... These guys need to take them time out, listen to the peers, listen to um, the civil servants that who have been working in their ministry for many, and take guidance and counsel from them and learning and teaching to be a minister. Okay, I got you, my brothers. Uh, so that is the problem. Oh, I will be back because I have a number of questions to ask you and a number of things the Prime Minister is not telling us. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your contribution uh, tonight. And just again to remind you that Straight Talk is on is live on Amazon Alexa. Uh, and we have beamed throughout the entire world. And now all you have to do is uh, go to your app store, download the app. And all those who have Amazon Alexa devices, just say Alexa downloads skill then alexa will ask which skill then you say massive vibes radio uh my street dog family this email reads patches good night always listens to your program but i'm a first time emailer there is a certain nurse working at the deep bay health center she's very rude when people say good morning to her, she don't answer at all. She stands by the door most of the time and let the trainers do her job. Most of the people who go there to get their pressure and sugar checked have stopped going there. What are they supposed to do? Stay home and die? They ask me to reach out to you on their behalf. They are afraid to speak out. Patches, please look into this for us. The nurse's name is Nurse Philip with this email and if you have joined me just join me my straight dog family we are looking at our thesis tonight uh, which is, i have been, i have titled uh, why a bunch a team filled with experts performed so poorly and what we have highlighted we have highlighted uh, certain areas uh, within uh, of poor performance. And if you have just joined me, uh, some have raised, but our callers have raised, raised uh, reasons uh, why they, this team filled with experts uh, continue to perform so poorly. One said there is no opposition. One said you have six ministers well they, in fact there are eight ministers total but only one has ministerial experience and that one i'm sure they are referring to the right honorable dr denzel llewellyn uh, douglas but my sure talk family as we make the point uh, uh tonight i raise first of all uh in terms of the performance of, of our our team of ministers uh, that they have not really taken seriously their job as as I said my friends said when a team of experts comes together it is for a good reason but unfortunately this team of experts have come together to hustle the 
country's coffers. Uh, it's 9.33. Let's go to the lines. Call your live. Good evening, Mr. Lightbird. Uh, good evening, my dear brother. How are thou tonight? Not bad, and you? I am peaceful. I am peaceful. Great, great. And the, the simple solution to this thing with these guys, you know, is that the, the emphasis is more on spending money than doing a good job, you know. Mm-hmm. The money is there, so blow it. What's wrong with that? Is that the philosophy? Look at the four miles of road that they're planning to build for $31 million. It, it, that, that is not the most efficient way to build a road, is it? Not at all, you know. I mean, I'm someone. I didn't make some investigation. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, the yeah, I, I, you raised that matter before, right? And someone said to me uh, that the cost of material have so escalated. I mean, you're talking about almost a sixty percent in terms of uh, what we did for the entire stretch of Island Main Road, uh, <laughs> you know. And 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 uh, consultancy costs, so, uh, so baloney. Uh, it was really baloney. I, I, was speaking, I was speaking to an engineer. It was really baloney, though. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah. But anyway, let me just come a little crazy in the city. Too. I hear that the cabinet planning to buy a eight seater private jet, man. <laughs> yeah, that is to get the prime minister and his new wife around the place, and it, they, they won't be charging him for travel. Uh-huh. But the, the ministers with their new increases in salary and so other cabinet members who get the big junker salary, they will have to pay a little something for their travel. Okay. So we hear in. So <laughs> interesting. If you want a job as a pilot you can apply <laughs> now. <laughs> I wonder how economically <laughs> feasible that would be. <laughs> well I mean, one of the effort. One of the economic experts must be advised them on that okay, different okay. base on the amount of travel that they do. Okay. They don't like wasting time. You're sitting on the airport for an hour two at a time, costing the country money, eh? okay. So you better to get okay. your land and go do your business direct, and come back home. Direct flights and return. Time, time, right, time is money. Time is money, yes, man. <laughs> yes. The other thing, though, Kian High School. Mm-hmm. I heard a a report this afternoon and things that I said with the mention that um the 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 minister responsible for education was saying that they're building a state of the art bathroom in that um <laughs> school and there was a state of the art bathroom before. We didn't give any definition of what a state of the art bathroom involves. But I have to get up and walk my mind now and think about it. <laughs> The toilets, when you finish doing your stool, you will have an arm that will wipe you behind. That's the state of the art. When you urinate, there are other things that come across and wipe, wipe away the excess water. When you go and wash your hands and face, you have hot air blows that dry your hand and your face. And all the water that comes out of that state of the art bathroom will be purified and put back into the, the bead well in Kayan. <laughs> so you're not, it doesn't waste water. That is state of the art. Okay. I wonder what else we have state of the art of in St. Gitsa Nevis. God bless us. Have a good night. Have a good night, my dear brother. <laughs> Thanks for the light moment. Let's go back to the lines. I thank the scholar for holding color. <laughs> your life. Good night, Patius. Good night, all listeners. Good night, my brother. Uh, you know who I am. Yes, sir. I want. I need, I need to backtrack uh, some information and move forward. Let's say that a party, a different party, a new party, were to win the next election, and pending if this. New administration go through three years and beyond. There is a sign that every three years ministers can get a raise, right? Let's say if a new party get in right now, using the you acknowledge the same time this party is in. You following me? I'm let's say I will let's say I were to say, okay, I need to need to raise their salary. But let's say also this administration go to the five years. 
and at the same time a new party win, is it fair to say, okay, we administration deserve a raise of pay, not utilizing three years of the anticipated time? You think that will be fair? I mean, should it be that the understanding after serving three years continuously, then a raise of pay will accepted by government because i mean i have a problem with i just come in i inst i haven't started to serve any time i haven't show any time and then gonna ask a raise of pay i think the understanding of that clause that law should have been government should serve three years before they could take a raise of pay it doesn't matter what a gap has passed in between. You must serve three years before you get a raise up. Eh? The color, because this the color. Uh -huh. I, Yes. I'm sorry. I I, I don't. I, I'm wondering if if the 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 law uh, en envisages that every three years they get a raise in pay. What the law is saying is that every three years the salary. Review commission uh, should meet doesn't necessarily follow that that the commission would recommend a raise in salary every every three years, you know. Because I mean, uh, yeah, one has to consider quite a lot of, of factors, you know, uh, inflation because so many things you have to consider, right? Cost of living and so on, right? But and of course the the the, the general public and the public servants as well. Because they're the ones who, who do the, the, the donkey work, not the ministers. And I, I know they've, well, they've told a lot of lies about uh, salaries, a permanent secretary getting more than a minister. It's such a blatant lie because uh, when you combine the, all the allowances, as you can see, the prime minister has gone to $22,000 per month. The basic salary is what? I don't remember. Just over... Uh, Twelve or thirteen thousand, if I, if I, I stand to be corrected, but the fact Somewhere is that the fact is that uh, the your salary is what we can be termed a compensation package, right? Whatever your allowances all combined, all accumulated, gives you your salary. That is your salary, not the basics. This is a basic salary plus your allowances, which gives you the gross income or your gross salary. You know? Right, but I get to your point. Uh, I'm sorry to to hog your time, but uh, uh, well, I wanted to, to bring that that perspective in. I I believe that introduction is misunderstanding, and also I believe that to make it simple, every administration should last at least three years. And then that uh, commission shall take place. Not, not taking a gap because if you go back to the previous administration, whether they should have taken it when they should have taken it because they were in seven years and they did not take it. Yes, there was some um, consideration taken based on the, the uh, economical um, structure of the country in terms of moving for progress. Okay. But that does not warrant the new administration that take place, whether it's by legal or illegal cheating or unfair, to just come and take it. They didn't last three years. If they would, if, if, if they would say, okay, they last two years now, next year we'll make three years, then by all years, yes. But they didn't serve three years. Plus... Look at the gap of their race versus the common man, the civil servant. They have an interesting package. Civil servant is only hand to mouth. And then from the hand to mouth, they still have expenses that put them in a negative. And that is, the graph is unfair. I mean, $75, $100 raised 
is not enough because the dance can't pay for the hall. So think it. Regular people are in bankruptcy and they continue to go in bankruptcy. They will never get their head above water. Drowning bills to poverty, to starvation. And I don't like it. I just can't comprehend with that. And that got to change. If I win, if I were to say, which I did, that I am running next election <laughs> and my team win, I have to serve three years before I can get a review for that, for that, uh, okay, for the cars. Okay. Okay, my brother. Thanks Thank for you. Your understanding and I, I guess we can add as well uh the performance not just the performance of of the ministers but what about the overall performance of the economy you know what have have you done is like working in the private sector if you if you would have increased uh revenue by by 20% or, or, or 15% because normally in the private sector they don't ask you, uh, the directors, uh, what you are going to increase revenue, uh, or how you're going to increase revenue, but they will tell you that the company intends to increase revenue by 15 or 20% this year. And you just, as a manager, have just to fall in line and try to, to ensure that you don't vary. There's no variance. If this variance you have to give an account uh, for that variance. I want to congratulate Dr. Harris. Read this email and Sean Richards uh, for their excellent, their excellent and brilliant address given last week on the matter of salary increase for the ministers of government. They were both able to dispel the lies of those vagabonds who claim that the increase was orchestrated by Team Unity for themselves and the greedy, hungry, opposing leader, Snake, sat there like a quiet, a quite sneaky mouse, knowing fully well those shady, dangerous camps were lying. And he did not raise an objection to the speaker and clarify their misleading statements. Patches, my granny always say, Wherever you find a liar, you find a thief. I've heard that so many times from my grandmother. Stop taking credit for Grant's hard work and achievements, Marshall. All those large tourist boats docking every week at Patches' new pier that you and your government despise, denounce, and condemn as unfit for purpose is now your glorification for you and your gang of dishonorable men and women. A bunch of shameless vagabonds you all are, accepting payments and rewards that did not work for. Furthermore, that trophy you received the other day for being the best tourism minister for your hard work in tourism is laughable. It belongs to Grant. What hard work have you done except to travel extensively Joy riding. Mr. Grant has done all the hard work that you are now luxuriating in. JetBlue and all the other airlines that are now coming to our shores were negotiated by Grant and his team of tourism experts. Those who deceitfully gave you Grant's trophy, trophy obviously are looking for a favor from you. They are sh shameless beggars with this other email and this email reads I'll dispose of the email as my straight dog family if you bear with me lawyer Azad this morning on Island T you read an article ref referencing the shooting death of a lawyer in Tortolo while I do not condone nor give sucker to this type of criminality anywhere in the world nor do I know the motive in this matter it just necess necessitated me to make this, these uh, uh, following comments. There are numerous lawyers and attorneys general in the Federation and throughout the region who have given their clients some terrible and serious unfair dealings. 
They rip off their clients with their monies. They overcharge them. They thief and misappropriate their funds. They arrogate their clients' property unto themselves. And the poor clients just cannot get justice no matter how hard they try. The court in some instances would order these lawyers and attorneys general to pay what they owe, but they blatantly refuse to comply with the court's ruling and others. As I'm sure you recall some years ago, the Lady Chief Justice, right here at the opening of the new law year, term sent a strong warning to those lawyers who are breaching their client's trust, but her caveat fell on deaf ears. Our Attorney General, who should be setting an example, sadly is lacking in this regard, as he has found himself on the wrong side of the law. The dysfunctional bar association here, not taking you on when you lodge a complaint, you contact another lawyer only to find out that they will not take your case because they are friends with each other. And in some cases, they work together against you. Lord have mercy on us. There is no justice and satisfaction for the poor man. Well, some will take law, the law in their hands and do what they have to do, which is very unfortunate. Read that email. Let's go back to the lines. Caller, you live. Hello, caller. Yes, Mr. Leibard. Yes, sir. Carl here again. Um, Mr. Leibard, the email, uh, it's all right. And that is absolutely true with many of the lawyers in Thinkit. And that is absolutely true with the Bar Association. You don't get no representation when you file complaints. Because, as you know, the lawyers are not going against one another. I mean, we all know of many cases where lawyers have broken the law and lawyers have been even arrested and had some charges on them. And then after that, what happened? Null and void. Uh, Mr. Lyberg, the situation with the 13 workers at the ear and seaport. You know, the meeting they had the 1st of March 2024, they told them that by the 11 30 13, they will get the dismissal letter. You know, up to now, the workers ain't getting no a dismissal letter, and the private entity um, don't have workers up there since Monday. That's a rhetorical and question. Yes, yes, I am telling you. Okay. Because I do get those information. Every Monday and Thursday night when I call and I give you this information, you see nobody can dispute it. Okay, my brother, I'm happy. And Mr. Leibert, the workers are complaining bitterly that since last year, when they have meetings, staff meeting and any form of meeting, they keep asking and keep saying to the authorities, we feel that you all are going to privatize our job, the cleaning job at the airport. And managers, minister, up to the present minister, keep saying, no, nobody why you're here. It's nothing like that. Only to have a sit down with the workers on the 1st of March 2024 and to hear that they are, uh, hear what they tell them. You all are not terminated, you know. We're just going to hand over you all to the private entity. And not only that, we have the Labor Department here and Labor Department tell them of all the what they're supposed to get. So, you know, this is another package again for another set of workers that report on the labor. Okay. And we all know every time labor in government, a lot of people lose their job at the port. Yep, yep. Right? And here we get Mr. Labor. They ain't finished, eh? And I'm warning all of you working at the port who is listening, let me tell all you now, there's another section of Ohio who is going to be sent home. So they ain't done with the air and support yet with sending home people. There's another section of y'all who are going to be sent home. 
right? Okay. Mr. Leibert, quickly, what happened to the duty free that the Labour government in opposition campaign and say that when they, if they get in, they will give civil servants duty free? The civil servants are asking, coming up on two years, when are they going to get opportunities to get their duty free? The, the last thing, you remember, um, so many, many, many months ago, there was a committee here, up and down, and, and putting a lot of pressure on people, and checking people with court, and, you know, those kind of things about um, royalties for using um, entertainers and groups and singers' song. What happened to that committee? It's gone in a coma or it's dead? Okay, okay my dear brother, thanks for your intervention. We, we are here. And the last thing, what happened to the committee that was up and down? making all this noise that we are going to ban plastic and you all can, can use this no more, all kind of plastic thing. And so what happened to that committee? Good question, my dear brother. We'll... Uh, I go on, Mr. Leibold. Thank you very much. At 6 before the 10 o'clock hour, as we wind down tonight's program, I'll dispense of all these uh, emails. Uh, the Attorney General recently commented in Parliament, or recent comments in Parliament, beg your pardon, is reflective of a hardcore criminal, one who always in and out of prison and just don't care. For our Tony General to say that he's not faced by, faced by anything anybody says about him, for nothing now they say could be worse than what was said before about him, that is such an irresponsible statement and he ought to be ashamed of himself. Let's go back to the lines. Caller, uh, thank you for holding your life. Uh, listen to me again. I'm going to yield to the... I'm going to... Uh, this is going to be your second call. Um, the issue at Casper. Sources has told me that is at the airport. And it should be narrowed down and specified that the issue is at the airport. Where? Yes, there is a private entity will manage the airport tasks. And reason for that, the performance of the workers are not satisfying. That is why they are privatizing to a private entity. And they were given a choice to continue working with that private entity, and they have they will get two months pay if they do not accept it, which they will relieve them from here. So the workers have a choice to continue work with the private entity, or they can take a payout of two months pay. But then the private entity probably will be offering them back a minimum wage. So a person who might have been there for years, who is above minimum wage, if they decide to continue with the private entity, there will be different grade of pay because experience. Okay? So to hear that Casper fire X and X amount of people, the truth are not being told correctly. And I think someone who has that file should announce the true thing. Because everyone is jumping to different kind of um, speculation. Until the truth has been told, we will not know. So we here in the diaspora, we hear excellence of people being fired. For what? For what reason? Why? But it's not at the port. It's not at the port. It's at the airport. So somebody has to come and talk about that. To, for the truth to be told. Okay. And okay. we must not run away with first story. There are only the second and the third. So okay. that needs to be clarified. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think what is being said, it's Casper. Uh, airport is uh, one division in Casper. I want to investigate 
the tourism department uh, patches and the minister because she has a young lady uh, reads this email who works with her who she calls her personal assistant. Patches, she is not a minister of government. She has no qualifications, but every single plane the minister catches, the minister walks with her. Or there should be travels with her. This is how they're digging out the treasury. Patches, the workers say all she does is sleep every day and do the minister's personal errands. Her husband and her brother, who is also the assistant to our present governor general, got a taxi license and other persons cannot get any. Patches of staff says, you think that bad? She also has a cleaning company and rocking up some serious monies because she's getting all of the government contracts. Patches, do you remember the tourism fest? They had some time back. Well, the workers said she got the contract to clean up and she collected a heavy paycheck from the treasury and did not pay the workers she hired to do the cleaning job. Only she won benefiting from the Honorable Marsha and everybody else gets the crumbs. The public can't see the minister in peace because she's down there pushing up her mouth on people. If Marsha think her personal assistant alone could vote her back in... In she lies. She better get that young lady from around her because she would make it bad for her politically. Imagine she is not a peace, nor is she part of a cabinet. But every time a cruise ship comes and the minister goes on it, Marsha pulling her in everything. Patches Labour and Marsha don't even know the damages they are doing that will cause them to lose big. This upcoming election reads this other email. Who is really telling the truth? Is it Brantley or Drew? Between these two pathological liars, I don't know which one to believe. Drew said that he recently gave Brantley an extra $5 million for Nevis. When a reporter asked Brantley at his last press conference if the Nevis fair share has been in, now been increased, an extra $5 million, Jew said he gave him. Mark said he believed Jew misspoke because as far as he knows, the $5 million came from the Chinese and not the CBI who, not the CBI, who to believe, uh, Mr. Patches. I think he said came from the Taiwanese, not the Chinese though. I remember here that I have a song by that. Dear Patches, I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing to bring your attention to a concerning matter regarding our current Prime Minister, Dr. Drew. Recent events have revealed a troubling pattern of behavior. We were in Dr. Drew, despite having achieved no notable accomplishments during his tenure, thus far has audaciously sought to claim credit for the Commendable Human Development Index, HDI ranking, attained under the leadership of his predecessor, Dr. Harris. In an act with hellish glee, Dr. Drew wrote the following statement as if he had done something to attain the status. Less than two years after assuming political office, the Terence Drew led Senkis News Labour Party government has propelled the Twin Island Federation to the forefront of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, in the 2023-2024 Human development report. What makes this revelation even more alarming is the timeline of events. The date collection for this report, which ended on September 8th, 2022, just one month after Dr. Drew assumed office, clearly indicates that the improvements in the HDI were not a result of his administration's policies or initiatives. This attempt to mislead the public not only speaks volumes about Dr. Drew's desperation for recognition, but also exposes a fundamental lack of integrity and honesty. Uh, it is deeply concerning, beg your pardon, to witness such behavior from our elected leader as it undermines the trust and confidence of the people. Dr. Drew's actions reflect poorly on his leadership capabilities 
and raised serious doubts about his suitability for the position of Prime Minister. As I respected as a respected radio host, I urge you to shed light on this matter and hold our leaders accountable for their actions. It is no wonder that he is called Jew Jew Lai with this email. Good night, Patches. I have noticed recently Mr. Politics don't call your show anymore. With such a title, can he find anything to talk about quite strange? Or is it he's supporting Jew? Ask this question. If they are following the immunity, they will be in better shape. The fool people in the Federation, both Labour and the snake over in Nevis, they are following the foolish advisors. The entire Labour Party is made up of foolery, except me, Uncle Doggy. One $5 bread, a small beef, and a tuna for $18. The Labour government is a boasting Labour organization, and we all know why crab in have no head. Read this other email. Good night, Patches. If we indeed establish a marijuana industry who will buy the product ask this email up these jokers calling themselves experts is quite laughable the only clear expertise these crooks are displaying for the world to see is the ability to rob this country blind lord help st kitts and nevis st kitts and nevis need to wake up and stop letting these expert jokers walk over them and this other email reads that lady at the airport miss wendy because she's a big labor she's one of the major destroyers at the airport before you lose your job you already hear wendy i throw word on you wendy your time will come is is a wicked old wife uh, my straight dog family and you know i overlook to play this song by my street dog family. And I have to do this, do this before I go. This. All in government. Was bad at the garden. And have the people begging them pardon. Every time they pass a bill. Like people they want to kill. Promises that never get fulfilled. I have a solution, let me make it loud and clear To kill the branches and them that don't bear Call the undertaker The government dead, dead, dead And carry the head, head, head This government sick in bed Just to pronounce them dead, dead, dead Water with copper and lead Kill the branches dead Uh, my street talk family, what a mistake. I forgot to play that song by it earlier, but I'll get it to you uh, before. That's the mighty part, former Calypso King of St. Kitts, big labor man as well, saying the government dead. Caller, you're live. I'll take one more call after this one, if you can be guided by me. Well, uh, yeah, but I had to come back in. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah, I have to come back in here. You got me? Yes, I got you loud. Okay. That is, Lord Cut song is really a true song. Only in St. Christopher. Well, I'm going to say something and you may not like it. But if you, Patrick Ian Patrick Lloyd, were the Prime Minister, all this nonsense, what this Mickey Mouse, Tululu Crab government is doing, all of them will have to pay for it. Because you have the disciplinary measures, like Mr. Bradshaw. When Mr. Bradshaw was the premier of the country, any minister, anybody, any wrong things in this country, he put them in the place. Those who believe that they could have used the, the, the treasury money and do as they like with it. Mr. Bradshaw make them pay it back. And some of them run gone. And I want to say this here. 
politicians go out. Be careful when you are getting here because you got more Judas's, Jezebel's, and Delilah, and it's out here than when Christ was or not. Be careful with them. It ain't all hope no more than say, Lord, 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 shall enter in. Because a lot of them go and they say, well, didn't I prophesy in your name? Yeah, you did it, yes. But did they receive Christ in the heart? These are what we going. We got in this country here today. Me don't tell you patches. Whether you go in the volcano, I come in, in the video. <laughs> I'm not backing down. Okay, I'm a true unity man. True. And I want Brother Sean Richard and Brother Timothy Harris come together as one because the ship is on the reef and you need all hands on deck to get it off. Otherwise, the whole country going to drown. Okay. Let us forget what gone. The Bible say, forgive. Well, as human, we will forgive. But we can't forget, but don't bring it up. Let us save the ship and everybody will be happy. That's all I have to say. Patches, have a good night until. God bless. Have a good night as well. Well, I'm always for, as we call it, reconciliation. But I, I like the Bishop Tutu approach. We have to open the wounds, clean them, uh, treat them, lest they will fester. I'll perhaps take uh, one more call for tonight. Uh, caller, if you're guided by brevity, I'll accept your call. Are you there, caller? Yeah, Mr. Lyber, how you doing, man? I am peaceful, my brother. I am peaceful, my brother. What about yourself? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Well, I'm, I'm just going to um, ask you uh, what became of uh, the guy Big Lice. I haven't heard from him at all. And, <laughs> uh, um, you know, the reason why the reason why I brought this up, right, I want you to know that um, uh-huh. there, was, there was a person in the United States who was a whistleblower mm-hmm. uh, concerning the Boeing situation with those planes. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, he was found dead this week. Um, you know, we don't know what happened with that situation. Uh, different than that, my proposal to the young people in St. and Nevis is to try to step up and to become involved in the political affairs of their own country so we could get some new ideas in the place, you know, so we could move the country into a new direction. And with that said, uh, I want to probably see some type of bill passed to limit for per- term limits, you know what I mean? Um, two two terms for prime ministership and 20 years at the most for parliamentarians. After 20 years for parliamentarians, they really need to go home and give and make room for the young people to come in. You know what I mean? You know, this will kill kill some of this BS that's going on, you know, with these recycled politicians. You know what I mean? Um, another caller previously recommended that Sean and Harris should join. And, you know, that's a, that's a recommendation that's welcome. Yeah. But, um, if, if these two guys can't unite and forget the past, the opposition can never strive. You know what I mean? Um, and so I come back to my proposal for the young people to step up so we can bring some change to the Federation. And that's my contribution, man. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good night. Have a good night as well. Always welcome your contributions. And that's the way we're going to end it tonight, my Street Talk family. And those who may have uh, joined me late, uh, just to say we, we looked at our thesis for tonight, why a team of experts performs so poorly. And I made the point earlier that what makes someone good and marketable at what they do is the presence of consequences. I alluded to the fact that, for example, I'm a poor mechanic or a body repair man. I will lose business or, or I would fail to generate business. If I'm a poor contractor, my house 
They collapse on me. And with politicians and bureaucrats, there are no, there is no responsibility and no consequences when they harm others. When they cut social assistance programs to the poor people and increase their own salaries, like in the case of Jew and his cabinet, this comes with a bogus justification and lies. And it was signaled some time ago. It was transmitted. Their position was transmitted earlier, since in August last year, that they intended or wanted to raise their salary. Remember this? We also wanted to diversify our offerings. Remember I said we were of the view that... Uh, not that one I wanted to, to give you right now, my street of family. It was this one. I intended to give you it was this. I but I'm hoping that the ministers can in fact get an increase um, in salary. It's I, it's something I would I, I, it's something that I would not be opposed to. Um, so, but that's above my pay grade. I so they they had intentions to raise their salaries, and when Garth Lucifer Wilkin was confronted with the Salary Review Commission Act. He told a lie before about it went to the parliament, which was so false, so, so true. He had to come back and he said this, which is the truth. In 2018, the, formal, the first formal Salary Review Commission was established and the report was prepared and submitted to the then Prime Minister. It was, however, not tabled in the National Assembly, nor, as we discovered in this Honorable House, was it tabled in the then Cabinet. When we took office, the then Governor General, God bless his soul, the late Sir Tapley Seaton, KC, brought the report to the attention of the Prime Minister, the member for number eight, who then brought it to the attention of Cabinet, and now it is tabled in the National Assembly, as required by the Act. This is the procedural history of the 2019 report, Madam Speaker. Nothing. Not based on performance. They just wanted to enrich themselves. That's why they went into government. But going beyond that, my street dog family, the entire country is still livid. And the view still being touted that they have not delivered for the people. Yet, they are delivering for themselves. My thing is, yes. I believe you do it later. The first election and you win, and you go back in. That I feel that you should that may be a point. that you were able to deliver for people before you deliver for yourself. But this is my point of view. And my Shoot Talk family, they are all self-proclaimed experts. Experts, they have claimed they are. I'm tremendously proud of this team. This team is filled with experts in various, various fields. Any field you might call, there's an expert here, somebody who is well-versed in that area, even more versed than me, and that's a good thing. So if I talk about sustainable development, you have Dr. Joya Clark. If I speak to youth and women affairs, you have Honorable Iceland. If I speak about small business and entertainment and agriculture, Samuel Duggins is Honorable Samuel Duggins well-established. If I speak about energy and engineering and so forth, the Honorable Connors may not. If I speak about the law, it's a given for our AGS. When I speak about the tourism product and the advancement of labor laws and so forth, we have our learned Honorable who is a lawyer. When I speak about experience in government, we have our senior minister. When I speak about education and, I mean, when you talk about empowering of the youth and community development, we have our Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Jeffrey Han. And so this team is a serious team. And my Shoe Talk family, with all the expertise, they have not performed. And all have concluded that this team, filled with experts, are in politics for money. They're a bunch of greedy politicians. With all the expertise that boasts, 
Many still ask, why are these ministers, why are these politicians, why are they so incompetent? It is because they are representatives of those who elect them, frequently based on little more than an appearance and personality. Terence Michael Drew confessed that elections are easily bought. And I support Ira who advocates that we must change the change until we get the change we want. I think it is more practical to keep changing our vote until we get the change we want. We shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. The fact saying that you change until you get the change you want. Yes, the perfect shall not be the enemy of the good. And that's what my classmates said. But my student family, constant change is the very thing voters need to do here in St. Kitts Nevis to restore a functioning democracy. And people will have to stop selling their vote to the highest bidder. And that is how it is in St. Kitts Nevis elections today. Many at home sell their vote to the highest bidder. And in the diaspora, yes, you batter your vote for a free trip home to stay at a fancy hotel. And don't get mad and all up in arms with me and try to say that our democracy does not like that work like that. You know what I'm speaking about. So when we reflect on the last election and what transpired, we can only conclude Labour did not win the elections. It was Team Unity that lost the elections. Team Unity imploded or collapsed from within because of the snake-like behavior of a deceptive politician called Mark Bantley. He charmed many in Pam in a deceptive manner with his mantra about fair share. Where is that today? Where is that fair share today, my straight dog family? The same approach undertook by Timothy Harris is what Terence Drew is following. A night, two years, the snake. Mark Bantley has been eating humble pie. And now he says that Jew is a man of his word. You asked about fair share. Well, that, of course, continues to be an issue. Uh, I mentioned um, Prime Minister Drew uh, on two or three occasions during this press conference because I said thus far he has been a man of his word. Thus far, in terms of our discussions and the issues, he has responded positively. And two years... He hasn't got his fair share. Meanwhile, we have a team of experts performing badly in the area of housing. They have found no solution for the poor and indigent except to encourage them not to be disheartened. Moving quickly on to housing, um, 21 houses, we have 21 houses, might be a little bit more now. Um, that is under construction. But what is very um, happy, why, why I'm very happy is that the 2,400 homes from East Coast Development that we have been uh, talking about, they are actually on ground. They have started their work on the sample homes, that uh, houses that would be delivered for us to see as a model and then, right after that, that is going to be the takeoff with all of the houses that will be built. I know some persons would have applied online. I don't want you to be disheartened even if you are told that you're just qualified for a one-bedroom. We are collecting that data because we... My sure talk family, under... This administration they have gone back to the days when a house bigger day is smaller night. So that single mother cannot afford to pay for a two-bedroom house. 
with her four children. She must not be disheartened if she gets a one bedroom like street dog farm. In the area of health, it is worse. The JNF hospital. The service has deteriorated. Equipment malfunctioning. And guess what? The Minister of Health focuses on the morgue. The morgue. The morgue was in dilapidated condition. I'm sure if any of you would have gone there because of investigative purposes and you see the morgue, you'll be so disappointed. Somebody told me once they're standing in the morgue and the water coming through the roof, dropping down in the morgue. We have put an end to that. The man boasting about fixing the morgue. That reminds me of, of uh, uh, Minister Hendrickson back then, or Halvo, one time was campaigning in Keon, and he promised the people in, in the Green Valley he would build a cemetery. Well, Jew, fix the morgue. So people, no doubt, expects to die. The morgue is for dead people. Samal, in agriculture, was not serious about agriculture. He talked about growing money on trees. For 2023, where are those trees? Marijuana industry, as we have heard, is a multi-billion dollar industry. And we have been dragging at a snail's pace in getting involved. And I could not understand for the life of me why. Literally growing money on trees. But yet somehow, we don't want that. But I dare say, that era is over. And it's now a new day. And a better way. So in 2023, expect a vibrant, thriving marijuana industry. Literally growing money on trees. <laughs> yes, he's laughing. But 2023 has come and gone. But Marshall is serious about diversification. Product for sale because we're not only selling for ourselves, we're competing with several destinations. And so we're competing with Antigua, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, all those other destinations that are out there. We have to get our product there and compete with them. We felt we had to diversify what we offer, meaning we had to offer more than the sun, more than Frigate Bay, the beach, and more than the sand. You can and guess what Marshall is offering? She's going to diversify to marijuana, to weed. Some call it cannabis. Then we are diversifying our offerings, meaning if you have a product, a tourism product, we want to keep it fresh and relevant. So when you go to some other destinations and they have sexy things, when you come to Send Kids, it mustn't just be um, frigate man fryers. But there must be things for our visitors to do. So we ventured into cannabis tourism, and it's not that we want everybody to be high, but when they... We want to enhance the visitor experience. So when we went to the budget discussions in December, that was one of the things we discussed. If you all are following, you would see there's a request for proposal for a master grower. A master grower. So we can diversify the tourism industry to cannabis tourism. Wow. You ain't going to be high? (laughs) <laughs> but my Sri Lanka family, when the elephants fight, and many of the labor comrades are fighting, and when elephants fight, the African proverb tells us it is the grass that suffers. In this case, it means that the weak will get hurt in conflicts between the powerful my street dog family. So, they are storing together this team of experts. Yes, but they are empowering themselves and that is why we have a team filled with experts and they're performing so badly. And there's no opposition as someone said tonight. And my street dog family, they only have one experienced member in the cabinet, member with ministerial experience. But yes, they sort together, 
but they are empowering themselves. And that's why we have a team filled with experts that performs so poorly. That's my story tonight, my straight dog family, and I am not going to change it. I'm going to thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight. As always, I want to thank you, the many listeners. Remember, we are now on Alexa as well. I want to thank you who sent emails, those of you who called. I want to assure you and remind you that you are the ones who make straight talk. And for that, I say a big thank you. And I'll take this email. Dear Patches, you just read an email about this woman working with Marsha. And I'm working to let you know. I'm right to let you know that this is true. I made a call to the Ministry of Tourism and I asked to speak to the minister. And this female answered that her English was worth an English book. And the way she answered the phone, I was going to hang up. But I just wanted to give her a message for the minister. And she said, I will let her know your call and what else you want to tell her. This is a total shame and disappointment because she does not have any subjects and no training at all. But my sweet talk family, that's where we're going to end it. And I want to give God thanks for guiding our conversation tonight and as always. I want to thank you, the listeners, the callers, those who sent emails. Remember, you are the ones who make straight talk. And for that reason, I see a big, big thank you. I am in Patrick Libel and God's spear. We will connect on Monday for another edition of Straight Talk. Until that time, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember... That whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, you must believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank Him for taking you through the night. And my sweet talk family, keep moving on. Bye bye. Until we connect on Monday. <laughs>